Hello, my name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and over. So today what I'm going to do is um, a cooking recipe, cannabis cooking recipe. And it's one that's been long overdue, I'm sure, because um, a viewer subscriber suggested that I do a show, a cooking show, on how to make uh, like a stir fry with shrimp, medicated. So I thought that was a great idea, because not everybody wants to eat cookies and candies all the time medicated. They want to eat something healthy and sometimes savory. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to soak, soak the shrimp, number one. You gotta thaw the shrimp out. They're frozen, at least the ones I have. <laughs> Unless you're like catching shrimp fresh, which lucky you. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna have to thaw the shrimp out first. After the shrimp is thawed, then I peel the shrimp. Then after I peel the shrimp, then I will um, marinate the shrimp in the cannabis oil that I'm gonna make using coconut oil. And then after that, which will take overnight, the next day I'll saute the shrimp and then I'll put the shrimp on top of rice and vegetables. So yeah, that's the whole process today. Um, before we get started on that, I'll show you what I'm smoking on today. Because I love to smoke when I'm cooking because it keeps me focused. It keeps me, uh, you know, knowing what I'm supposed to be doing next. <laughs> so this is lavender kush right here. And it's a really nice stinky herb. Very potent. And some say it's good for high blood pressure. So. I've got high blood pressure, but not so much now. <laughs> so I wrote some joints. Uh, I'm going to smoke one. I use the raw papers, and that's where I put the lavender kush inside of this raw paper. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a great day. Cheers. All right, I'll be right back and I'll show you how to thaw out the shrimp. Hello, we're about to put this frozen shrimp into a bowl and then put some cold water on top. When you're thawing out frozen shrimp, you don't want to use hot water because what will end up happening is the shrimp will cook while it's soaking. So here's the shrimp that I'm using. Uh, it's a uh, wild Patagonian pink shrimp. Um, oh, shit, I dropped one. Let me grab it. I'll rinse that one off. I dropped another one. Okay, this is what happens when you, when people use packaging that doesn't have a Ziploc bag or some sort of resealable bag. I hope that uh, the pet, that uh, Aquastar gets on it because I'm dropping shrimp. <laughs> All right, so yeah, what you're gonna do is put the shrimp into a bowl like that, like so. Grab these shrimp and rinse them off the other ones that I dropped. And then you're just going to fill up your bowl with water, with cold water, like I said. Make sure it's cold. If it's hot, it will cook. So let me bring you over to the shrimp so you can see them. Get a good look at what I'm going to do. Okay, make sure this water is cold first before I put it on there. Get the temperature cold. And um, how long does it usually take for the shrimp to thaw out? For me, it usually takes about, I'd say, 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how solid frozen the shrimp are. Um, yeah, that's how long it takes. So basically what we're going to do is fill this up over the shrimp if we can. If you have a bowl that's not big enough, get a bigger bowl. That way you can fill it up to the top over the shrimp. That way it will um, thaw it out faster. That's what you do. And I just leave it in the sink and let it thaw out for, uh, like I said, about 15 to 20 minutes. I think I said that. <laughs> yeah, do, do 15 to 20 minutes and it should be thawed out fine. And next when we come back, what I'm going to do, ah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, show you how to make the cannab cannabis oil that I'm going to use to marinate the shrimp with. All right, be back soon. Hello. We're back again and we're getting ready to make the cannabis oil. Um, before we get into making the cannabis oil, um, I usually like to grind the herb when I make the oil so it makes it easier to process in with the oils. 
whether it's, you know, cannabis, like whether it's coconut oil or butter or olive oil, I like to be able to grind the herb that way, grinds it up fine and then it, I can cook it into the oil and it will distribute a lot evenly, it seems to me. If I just break up the herb, then it won't be evenly distributed and the medication will be, some will be in this part of the food and some part of the food. I know that from past experience. <laughs> so before I do that, I'm gonna smoke this keef that's in there. We use this uh, grinder uh, a lot. So we end up having keef collected when we make our edibles. So I'm gonna put that in my space pipe right here and I'm gonna uh, smoke that with some lavender kush here that I have so yeah I hope you guys are enjoying this uh, the series here well not series but this I was gonna do more um, cooking shows more often but um, you know life gets in the way so these are very involved videos so um, but I wanted to do them because I wanted to provide some information on how to cook foods that aren't just brownies and cookies although i do have a cookie recipe on here too but i wanted to create uh, recipes that are savory and healthier and i did a stir fry before you can check that one out medicated stir fry this time it's a medicated stir fry with shrimp so alrighty guys cheers my lighter will go i gotta put it up on torch mode Ooh, that's nice. <coughs> <coughs> so let's come on over to the counter and I'm going to show you how I grind up this herb here for the oil. Let's see if I can bring you on over. Bring you over here along with me with the grinding station. Let um, me bring the lid. So this, uh, I don't know if you can see here. Let's bring this back here. So you can look at me. So this is the grinder I'm using. It's a regular standard grinder. You can you can find a grinder anywhere. This is a, just happens to be what's called a Toastmaster. So um, this is the scale that I'm using. You see that good. And uh, basically, it's going to tell me how much, how many grams uh, that I that I put in to the marinated shrimp. <laughs> so yeah, here we go. I'm just going to put some on here. For what, first, what I have to do is Push this button that says tear, I think, right? This is a new scale, so I'm getting used to it. So, so it's got a zero, zero out, I guess. Let's put this down. Let me just drop one on there. Yep, now it's it's all it's all zeroed out, but you got to be careful with it. So now the numbers are going crazy. Okay, leave it alone. <laughs> Let's push the tear button again. Okay. Let's see. Okay, that's now it's zeroed out. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna put the nugs on there. I want to use. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use eight grams. So. So that's five. And. That's still at five. Six. Seven. Eight. Perfectly eight. So this is what. It's going to get all crazy if you see the numbers on it, but don't even look at that. This is what 8 grams of uh, cannabis looks like according to the scale. So that's how much I'm going to use to make the cannabis oil, coconut oil, for the stir fry. So yeah, what I'm going to do is put these herbs, these nuggets, into this grinder. And we're going to grind up some cannabis. So yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Wish I can like portion you to where you don't just see my like just a part of me <laughs> like I'm sawed off. So I hope you guys are having a good day today um, or evening if you're watching this in the evening, evening time. <clears throat> I used to like watching cooking shows on the Food Network a long time ago when I had cable. I don't have cable anymore. And basically what that would do is give me ideas for meals to cook because I don't I don't go out to eat. Um, we may occasionally order pizza here and there, maybe twice a month at that, but 
I don't go out to eat. I don't go out to restaurants and eat all the time or fast food all the time and eat. So there's a grinder. I'm going to grind it up. Grind it up a little bit at a time and not too much so it doesn't get like clogged or whatever and not ground up really good enough. So hold your ears if you have headphones on, I guess. Turn it down. <laughs> I'm probably going to want to get a little bowl of saucer to put this herb on too. I'll be right back here. That way um, I can continue grinding up the rest and it will be evenly grind, ground up. It doesn't have to be ground down really fine or anything like that. So I got a bowl that I'm going to put it in. And that's the treat at the end is like getting to scrape out the... Um, the keef in there <laughs> after you grind up the herb. Whenever I use the grinder for um, making edibles, I look forward to that. It's like after I eat the edible, then I smoke a bowl of the keef from the process of making that edible. It's just awesome. So yeah, um, there's so many ways that you can cook cannabis and in stir fry form, I think it's great. And I've always wanted to experiment it with marinating uh, cannabis in, I mean, marinating like fish in a cannabis like infused oil and seeing how I feel after I eat it. I mean when I made that stir fry that one on the one show on this channel you can check that out. I felt really good. It really got me very very elevated just like an edible would. But it, it felt different than eating a brownie, a cookie or a chocolate or something like that or even a medicated. I've had a medicated pancakes before so each, you know, between the savory and the sweet, it's definitely going to be kind of a different effect, I think, on people. Okay, it's going to get it loud again. I'm going to grind the rest of it. Okay. You don't, like I say, you don't have to grind it really fine, just so it's like this. That's the kind of uh, consistency I'm going for when I do it. I'm not saying the way I do it's the only way to do it. But it's been working for me and I'm up for hearing advice on how people make their medicated meals as well so it's not like I'm saying I'm the expert of it all so there you go uh, so what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna mix it with um, some coconut oil and I think I'm gonna use uh, two cups of coconut oil so this is like eight grams of cannabis and two cups of coconut oil I'm gonna gonna go grab a pot and then I'm going to put the cannabis into the oil and cook it. And that way it'll be infused in it and let it simmer for a while or like off of the heat. So, all right, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. I'm getting ready to show you guys how to make the uh, cannabis infused coconut oil. So let's take a little bit of a smoke break with some lavender kush or whatever it is that you're smoking. What are you smoking out there? <clears throat> There's so many beautiful strains out there. Cheers. All right, let's go on over there. Let's go on over to the stove. A thing called the stove. Um, as you can see, I got a lot of stuff going on over here because earlier I did a show on how to make um, just a simple stir fry for my Dark Moon Doll channel. That's not medicated. <laughs> So you can always check out my Dark Moon Doll channel. Um, it's a YouTube channel, and um, it's pretty much like this channel, only there's no cannabis smoking in it. <laughs> but somewhat different. Where did I put that lighter? Hold on, guys. One more puff of this magical herb, and we'll get going on this. All right, put the joint to the side. <coughs> All right, so <coughs> I got a measuring cup. <coughs> it's good to have a measuring cup. <coughs> I don't care what kind you get. This is a Pyrex. I love Pyrex, but whatever kind you have, it helps to know the measurement of what you're doing, you know, so the things turn out well distributed. Spices, dosages turn out evenly. And remember with uh, edibles, you can always just do a little bit if this is your first time and if you're more adventurous go for it <laughs> so I'm gonna measure up uh, two cups of coconut oil 
and try not to spill it all over the place. So we got that's one cup. I'm putting it in this pan. There's one cup of oil. And make sure there's no oil in the burner. Sometimes that happens. That's not good. And we'll just do two cups of oil now. This will be two. Two cups. Yeah. So here we go. Um, now we're going to go, or I'm going to go, <laughs> and grab the herbs that I ground up. See? The ground up herb. I'm going to turn the heat on at five. Not really like high, but on medium heat. And I'm going to just... Um, the cannabis in there. Okay. So they're saying to strain it and everything uh, when you're done. Um, I'm not going to strain it. And you'll see why. So that's that right there. I'm going to let it like come to not a boil but start to get hot. And uh, that'll take a little time. So while we're doing that we can chit chat for a bit here. Why not? Grab my, um, but never work, walk away from something that's cooking though. That's one advice, unless it's rice and you got like 20, 15 to 20 minutes on it. But if it's something like this oil, do not walk away from it. Let me grab my wooden spoon, spoonula, here. And uh, I'm going to stir this up while I talk to you guys and while I smoke my joint here. So, yeah. Cheers once again to cooking and taking control of your health and uh, medicating yourself in a different way other than just smoking. Whoops. Okay. Making sure I didn't have the right, the wrong end. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to start stirring this up here. You may not really see much of me. <laughs> but yeah, um... Cooking can be very relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. Um, I do a show on here called Cannabis and Creativity, and I talk about how art can be creative, art can be creative, <laughs> how art can be relaxing and can be therapeutic, along with partaking in cannabis, and going further with that with cooking, because cooking is like a work of art. Cooking takes time. Some work of arts, and sometimes cooking can come together really quickly depending on what it is that you're preparing, you know? But I think it's another form of art. I mean, if you look at a lot of these fancy dishes that they do nowadays, um, especially like this, this one magazine called Bon Appetit, oh my goodness, <laughs> they, have these, these, uh, they have these recipes that are out of this world that with these very exotic, you know, mushrooms and spices from all over the world and, you know, these exotic, you know, animals that they're using. I mean, okay, that, that part is just a little ridiculous, the exotic animal things. People eating animals that are going extinct. I think that's crazy. But, yeah, there's, there's so many ways you can take it. You can get it really artistic with your art, with your, uh, with your cuisine, with your presentation. Um... I don't know, sometimes I do, like when I do the stir fries, mixing the vegetables up, I like to have like a variety of colors, it's kind of nice, like the brightness, the orange of a carrot, and the vibrant green color, like kind of almost like a forest green color of like uh, the collard greens and kale and broccoli, so, yep. Yeah. We're getting some action over here. It's starting to heat up. People, when you, uh, people, huh? When you guys, like, make your cannabis oil, how do you make it? You can share with me how you do it. I don't like to strain it. You know, the last time that I strain, did something where I strained cannabis out of it, um, I made a cannabis salve or lotion, I guess you'd call it. Using in coconut oil, cannabis, what else? And a little bit of beeswax. And it turned out nice. I put it on my skin. My skin gets so dry here in California. Um, but I tried to strain it with the cheesecloth and it didn't work really well. 
I still got it in there. Maybe I just didn't strain it well enough. But it just looks like a few granules in there, so. It'll be like a loofah effect. <laughs> Let's see, this is coming along really nice. The color is changing, it's getting darker. Let me show you the dark color. It's very, very cool. Let's bring you over here to the oil here. There's that dark color. Oh, really dark color. Turning more of like a, a dark green, brownish dark green color. Yeah. Doesn't smell too bad either. <laughs> it smells very wonderful. That's the thing when you're when you're uh, when you're cooking with cannabis, when you're baking with cannabis, it makes your kitchen smell really good. It's just like any other spice. Like when you're making a homemade pasta sauce and you're using a reg fresh oregano, the smells, the fragrances, the aromas are just all over the house. They get into every room. <laughs> Some foods you don't want that to do. <laughs> had to get get at it with like an incense <laughs> the really oniony dishes but it's coming along it's getting hotter I don't want it to come to a boil though I just wanted to get hot enough to where this is the process it's kind of like a <laughs> it's kind of like scientific and chemistry like with this whole process of combining the cannabis with the oil, the coconut oil, because it's a great combination. We all, well, people that cook with cannabis, you know that um, it's able to process and assimilate into your body and for you, for the cannabinoids to enter your body more effectively as far as edibles if you use some sort of oil base to mix the cannabis with. And out of fire. <laughs> it's coming along. Coming along. And sometimes, like, people want to, um, they want to do a process called decarboxylation, which involves um, taking your buds, how many these you're going to use for whatever dish, and um, breaking it up, not really grinding it, breaking it up, putting it onto a cooking pan. Putting it in, into your oven, I think at like 200 degrees. I think that's how I did it when I, when I decarboxylated the cannabis on this cookie recipe show that I did. So what I did was, uh, yeah, put it in there at 200 degrees, and then uh, I, it baked in there for how long did I bake it in there? For an hour maybe. It was probably less than an hour that I baked it for. So, um, but yeah, it. It turned out good. It seemed like it was a bit stronger too. That's what you're preheating it. So I'm taking this oil off of the um, heat. I'll show you. Let me move this wok out of the way. I've got, I've got another. <laughs> I've got stir fry vegetables over here too from a previous video that I was doing cooking video. Let's turn that off. So let me give bring it over here so you can see what it looks like. What the oil looks like. And I turned it off so it won't keep cooking, but here we go. So that's what the oil looks like. Very thick color, almost like a brownish greenish color. So, so I'm going to let this sit and like just kind of simmer a little bit um, for probably uh, five to ten minutes. But in the meantime, I'm going to go over and see if our shrimp is thawed out completely over by the sink. Oh wow, that's a good vintage point of it. I was trying to get a view of the shrimp. Let's see how the shrimp are doing. So these are the shrimp that we had soaking. Remember that? They're uh, they're looking like they're ready to be peeled. So I'm going to show you how I peel the shrimp, and that will be an easy process. All I need to do is get two different saucers and a bag to put the uh, the shrimp shells into to dispose of. So, yeah, pretty easy stuff. Pretty easy, these two saucers. One for the shrimp and one for the shells. So when you shell shrimp, it's pretty easy to do. As long as they're completely thawed out, 
they're pretty. Or if they're, they're a little bit frozen still, just a tiny bit, still okay. This is what a shrimp looks like if you don't know. A lot of people have had shrimp, but I, maybe not everybody. I can't assume that everybody knows what shrimp look like. <laughs> so this is basically the this, this shell on there. You just take it off. It comes off easily in the tail, just like that. So there's a the shrimp and there's the shell there. That easy. <laughs> and so now I'm shelling shrimp. <clears throat> so yeah, it's really easy, easy to cook. It's just like a lot of people don't want to take the time to do so because it's not it's not convenient. But if you can if you're one of those people that that eats out um, every day of the week, why don't you trans you could transition out of that by eating one home cooked meal per week. Try doing that, and then like every and then like after a whole month, try doing. A home cooked meal every day, you know, and to see what the difference is. Um, <clears throat> people could save so much more money if they were like, uh, if they were making their own food, if they were bringing their own lunches. There was a time when I worked this uh, warehouse. It was the J.C. Penney warehouse, and they ate like, oh my God. They had, there was nothing really that, that close around to go to eat. There's like a Burger King, but it's like a, um, they had this thing and people might know it. Food trucks are really popular these days, but back way back when they weren't cause they were synonymous, synonymous, synonymous. They were, um, most people would think, oh, they have a roach problem, roach infestation, that they're not sanitary. That's how, that was the view of them back, way back when. And they would call it the Roach Coach, that uh, food truck that would come to the J.C. Penney warehouse. And I would always bring my lunch, but there was that one time where I didn't bring my lunch, and I ate a burrito off of that, off of that uh, truck, and it was disgusting. I like threw up just the oh god, it was bad. <laughs> so I think it's it's a good thing to learn how to cook. It's a good skill, just even just to learn how to do the basics. Um, I've been cooking since I was five years old. I wasn't like formally taught. I pretty much like um, just watched and observed my mom and how she cooked. And then it got to the point where I was doing a lot of the main dishes in the house. And I learned how to make really what would seem to be elaborate meals for a little kid. But um, yeah, I found it fun. And I find it challenging when you don't have as many resources, but then you have to get really creative. And that's where the art comes in, <laughs> I'm sure, where you get really artistic and creative about things. I could pretty much make something out of nothing when it comes to food. <laughs> you know, I pretty much can. Okay, so we shelled all of those um, shrimp. So here's the shells and here's the shrimp. I'm going to bring the shrimp over to the saucer. I mean, over to the saucer over to where the oil is and I'm just going to throw these shells into this bag to discard them and let's do that if you don't discard these right away my, my I have a cat and he loves shrimp I mean not shrimp he likes fish of course because cats like fish but he might like want to like sniff out the garbage or something <laughs> any blame him it's fish cats love fish so Let's see, got that all done. So let me wash my hands and then I'll move you over to the uh, counter where the, uh, the shrimp and the herb foil is. Wash my hands off. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. Um, I just wanted to get to doing a video for you guys as far as cooking goes because it was requested, and I'd like to bring forth to you guys what you want to see. So let's, without any further ado, let's get on over here. So here's the shrimp is going to be over here. Let me position myself in such a way where I can show you everything. I'm going to bring this bowl over here because that's what I'm going to use to marinate the shrimp in. And I'm going to marinate. I'm going to marinate the shrimp overnight. So tomorrow you'll see the final result of the stir fry. Well, uh, yeah, I'll probably. I'll probably list all of this tomorrow is what I'm saying. <laughs> so yeah, so you just 
Put your shrimp in the bowl. Bam. And then you just uh, pour your oil on top of the, the shrimp. Now I've marinated meats before and shrimp before, but never with cannabis. The only difference is, is there's cannabis in it this time for me. So yeah, you're going to put your oil on top of the, the shrimp. And let's see, here we go. I'm just going to marinate it in there, just about that much in there. And I'm going to let that sit overnight and see what happens. And boy, will I be surprised. <laughs> I hope. And so I'm going to just leave the rest of this oil too um, for tomorrow when I saute everything. If I wanted to use any extra vegetables. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let this sit. You know, I might just put all of the oil in there. I'm going to put all the oil in there and, and the herb and everything. There we go. Get it all in there. I was thinking of just using a little bit, but I can always make more oil. Put this pot in the sink. And yeah, so this is what we got. It's going to sit in here overnight. And I'll put it in the fridge. Once, you know, everything's good to go, put it in the fridge. Sit overnight. And then I'll saute it in with the vegetables and put it over rice. And we'll eat it. Well, I'll eat it, <laughs> and I'll tell you what I think of it, and I'll hope you find it to be as delicious as I think it's going to be. So let's end this up with a uh, smoke over here. I don't know if I want the joint again. I think I might go back to the, uh, the keef and the lavender kush flower. So yeah. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll, like I said, is I'll post this show tomorrow. So put all the videos together. And that way you can have a recipe on how to make medicated shrimp stir fry. I mean, that's going to be delicious. And you can have that like right at night, you know, right before you have to go to bed. Well, not right before bed, but for your dinner. And so when it comes time for bedtime, you'll sleep soundly, you know. And you'll have some really good nutrients going through your body as well. So yeah, thank you for joining me today, and um, I'll just, like I said, I'm just going to add the, I'll see if I can add all of these videos together, so it'll be one long show, one long cooking show, and uh, no means am I an expert or a chef, okay, I just want to let people know that I'm just here experimenting with my medicine that I grow myself, and not only do I like to smoke cannabis, I also like to uh, eat it and ingest it in an edible form. So I just want to present to everybody different ways of partaking in cannabis so that everybody doesn't think, oh, I got to smoke. I don't want to smoke. Well, there's so many options out there. So, Alrighty, guys. See you soon. So hello. This is the final part of how to make medicated stir fries stir fry vegetables with shrimp <clears throat> so the last part i'm going to show you um, is what happened when i set the shrimp in the fridge overnight um, if anybody knows oh, sorry if anybody knows about oils when you put them in in the refrigerator make them cold temperature you can solidify and especially with coconut oil so this is why it looks like this i know it looks weird that's why it looks like that so what I'm going to do, do you see the shrimp in there? I'm going to take the shrimp out and put it into this pan and heat it up to saute it. And um, then what I'm going to do with the remaining coconut, um, cannabis coconut oil that's in here, oops, <laughs> um, I'll clean that up. I'm going to heat it up in this saucepan here and then I can save it as like a cannabis fish oil, shrimp oil, which can be used to marinate other fishes other fishes, other types of fish that I have. I have some salmon in the freezer, so I could make that medicate it. You can also do that too, and you can also add this fish oil, cannabis oil, to your, um, your stir fries, even if you're not using fish in it, if you just want a little bit of that flavor. And um, a really popular uh, sauce that's used in Asian cuisine, or actually Chinese cuisine, is oyster sauce. So um, there you go, I mean, you can do that. <laughs> so let me clean that up and I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to take these shrimp out of the coconut oil, put them right into the pan and they smell very much infused with the cannabis. Soaking them overnight I think was a great idea. As soon as I get them all in the pan I'll show you what it looks like. So let's get it all in the pan here. 
And I used, um, I used 8 grams of cannabis, but you don't have to use that much. You can use less. This is your first time um, making edibles, cooking with cannabis. You can use less. Um, and if you do use as much as I do, just eat a little bit. Start off with a little bit of the stir fry, not a lot. I watched this really cool show, and I think I, not a sh was it a show? Yeah. It was a show, and it's from Vice. Uh, some of the stuff on Vice is really weird, but this was pretty cool. It was, um, and I talked about this, I believe. Oh, yeah, on the video I did about Hunter S. Thompson. You can check that one out on this channel, but yeah. It was so cool how they made a cannabis infused meal, like all these different entrees and um, appetizers, dessert. It was so, so classy um, the way it was put together. You could probably find that on um, Vice. It was Hunter S. Thompson's um, wife that they, uh, they put it all together for her because Hunter S. Thompson was a big supporter of cannabis and he partook of cannabis too as well. So something I didn't know before I watched that, um, before I watched that uh, show on Vice. <laughs> Toaster oven dinging. <laughs> See, I almost got all the shrimp in there. It's quite a bit of shrimp. Um, I found like a basic recipe on how to make um, the cannabis infused coconut oil, marinating it with shrimp. So, but I adapted it because it called, they had, they were using like a lot of shrimp. I think like a pound of shrimp <laughs> and I'm not cooking that much because um, to be honest I'll probably be the only one really I mean really eating this and I'm gonna eat it as like um, for medicine and for enjoyment <laughs> so I'm gonna put the rest of this coconut oil like I said in this saucepan and I'm gonna melt it down and then you'll see how it's liquefied and um, yeah, like I said, you can use it on top of your other stir fries, or you can marinate your meats in it. Your, um, you know, you could even marinate it if you eat other kinds of meat besides uh, fish, which I don't only eat fish. But if you eat like, um, I don't know if it would be weird <laughs> if your fish, if your other meats tasted like fish, probably would. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I got these uh, these shrimps going. I might want to dump some of this oil out because it's a little too oily for my liking. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's see over here. But yeah, right now the shrimp are cooking in the cannabis oil, the coconut oil inf with, infused with cannabis. Um, smelling really good. But what I'll probably do is drain some of this grease out, I mean this oil out, because I don't want it too oily mixed in with the stir-fried vegetables so yeah it's almost done well so shrimp doesn't take that long to uh, cook it really doesn't um, but you want to cook it thoroughly nonetheless so yeah after it cooks in the oil I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drain the oil out into this pot like I said but this is a really good type of shrimp these shrimp are very robust and meaty there was a time when I just stopped eating all meat altogether um, because I just wanted to see how it would affect my body. And I was still conscious, I was wanting to be conscious about these animals that I'm putting into my body and everything where they're coming from. And then I started feeling like I wanted to have fish again, and so I just did. So I didn't really think about it or second guess it. My body just wanted it, so I started eating it again. Um, it's very nutritious, as a lot of people know. Um, you want to try to eat like not just bottom feeder fish, like like catfish. <laughs> but um, I mean, no offense to people who love catfish, but it is a bottom feeder fish, meaning that they eat the stuff that's at the bottom of the sea. So it's like whatever goes into that fish's body is going into your body. <laughs> and um, I remember when I was growing up that um, catfish was brought, bought a lot because it was cheap. A lot of things were bought, and still are bought because they're cheap. Not because they're good quality, but just because they're cheap. I was saying once that I want to eventually get a, um, a fishing license so I can just fish myself and get my own fresh fish. <clears throat> I think it's a good, um, 
it's a good good skill to know how to do especially if you find yourself not able to um, go to a grocery store and buy fish and buy the things you need to make for a meal if you're able to catch your own fish yourself then that's a skill that will really come in handy you know later on so yeah this these shrimp are doing really good um, it's not really fried but it's just like a lot of oil and I usually don't like to cook my meals in a lot of oil I guess only if you're frying and what I've been trying to do is cut down on frying stuff frying food um, like french fries and things like that and a lot of times when I make the shrimp I'll bread it and fry it um, but I've been wanting to go more into to sauteing it more to put on the stir, fr stir fries that I like to make um, yesterday I made some stir-fried stir vegetables that consisted of broccoli, cauli not cauliflower, broccoli, um, Brussels sprouts, uh, let's see what else, collard greens, I think one leaf of collard greens, some red onions, um, what else, two tablespoons of honey, um, I cut up a jalapeno pepper, and what else, I think that was it. And then I mixed it, sauteed it together. I used olive oil and it was delicious. And I made it, put it on top of um, white basmati rice. So what I'm going to do is use the leftovers from that meal and just put this medicated uh, shrimp on top of it. So this is almost done, I believe. So you don't have to cook your shrimp too long when you saute them or when you have them overloaded in all this oil. <laughs> it's coming along good. So yeah, I always suggest never never leave the cooking station if you have something on like like on high or that's really delicate like with oil, hot oils. It's very dangerous. This is just kind of common sense stuff. Because if I'm gonna leave the kitchen and I have something like this on there, I'll either ask somebody to watch it for me or I'll just turn it off. You know. So I think this is done. Let's see, let me show you what it looks like right now. It's cooking. It is done. I'm going to take it off of the oil. I mean, off the oil. I'm going to take it off of the burner and then put the other pan that has the uh, coconut cannabis oil and melt that down. Put this over on the side. And remember when I said I was going to just add this to add the excess oil that's in this pan into the pan that I have the, the majority of the cannabis oil in. Yeah, I think I'll do this over the sink so it's more safe. Because I don't want to get hot oil all over the place. So yeah, this is cool. You'll have your, you could have your own like fish oil. Um, people like to use fish oil in. I was saying people like to use fish oil in their cooking when they do stir fries. Uh, I don't know if I've ever seen shrimp oil, but <laughs> there's all kinds of oils. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to let, let this melt down. I'll show you what I did. I drained out the um, cannabis oil out of the shrimp. So look, this is trial and error. This is my first time making medicated cannabis uh, infused shrimp. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to go grab a plate and I have some, some rice and vegetables that I'm going to put the shrimp over and then... Um, We'll sit down and we'll eat it and I'll talk to you about what I think of it. Alrighty guys, see you in a bit. So hello, my name is Trina. Obviously you know that because you've been watching my videos. So this is just the, uh, I'm going to show you what the uh, medicated shrimp stir fry, how it turned out and how it tastes to me. Uh, but before we get into that, I'm going to, I'm going to um, talk to you about why I have this on. <laughs> And foil it makes it look like it's a TV dinner or something <laughs> but what happened was our oven does not um, work function and I think I've mentioned that before so we have to get a part to make it work but in the meantime I had some leftover rice and vegetables as you can see on the plate and I heated it up in the toaster oven that's why I use this foil <laughs> so I just had a little bit of some rice um, and like I said the vegetables are um, broccoli um, <laughs> Why am I spacing out on it? Brussels sprouts, <laughs> um, a little bit of collard green, um, some red onion, and the medicated cannabis shrimp here. 
that I use coconut oil with. Um, so I'm going to give it a whirl and taste it. And um, I'm going to eat it <clears throat> and hang out with you guys on this sesh and see how long it takes for it to kick in. I'll probably do another video, like a post-meal um, kind of video, just describing how it makes me feel and what it tastes like, too. So, cheers. Mmm, <laughs> the shrimp is delicious. <laughs> I didn't end up... Um, I didn't end up um, straining the herb. Some people do that, but I like the way the herb tastes, so. Seems like I'm an oddball when it comes to that with a lot of people. Mm. The flavors are bursting. I can really taste that jalapeno pepper that I put in there, too. Man, this is really good. <laughs> Next time I would put, um, I'd probably put a little bit of garlic in there. But no onion. I don't like, I've noticed that when I mix garlic and onion together, it can be very explosive on my digestive system. <laughs> so it's better to just, um, for me to use one or the other. Oh my god, so good. <laughs> With meals like this, you're going to be careful because they taste so delicious that you don't want to stop eating them. And then you end up eating too many, <laughs> too much. And then he may be in fractal land. <laughs> mm, no, I'm serious. It's really good. I only put six shrimp on there. Well, now I'm down to five. Mmm. <laughs> It's very good, very savory, very earthy taste. Mmm, delicious. This recipe is fairly easy to do. So, um, like I said, I looked up a recipe on how to marinate shrimp. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy to do. So I'm going to put some of this down, finish what's in my mouth. <laughs> mm. And off screen, I'm going to finish the rest of this. And then um, I'll come back to you in about an hour and let you know how I feel about it. So see you in an hour.